week on Faithless. When God turned our captivity, our mouth was filled with laughter. God's about to take away sorrow from your mouth and put joy in your mouth. never fell to the ground. But the day, I said the day that the baby was born, especially if it's a son, Mr. King, you were dethroned. A coup took place without you knowing it. I came home the other day running from the gym came home running, walked into my house, opened the kitchen, and I smelled an aroma. And I look on the kitchen counter, there's a plate with a New York strip steak with vegetables and gravy on the side, and I went, "Woo! glory to God. As, as soon as my wife heard me shouting, she came running down from upstairs like superwoman. I mean, came black bandit woman, looked at me and said, this steak ain't for you. I said, what? He said, that steak is not for you. I said, who's that steak for? It's for Ethan. Now, Ethan is my son. I said, come back, come again. He said, that steak's not for you. It's for Ethan. I said, woman, let me tell you something. Everything in this house belongs to me. You belong to me. Ethan belongs to me. The dog in the house belongs to me. The mouse in the basement belongs to me. That steak belongs to me. No, 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 no. It belongs to Ethan. Did Ethan pay for it? Who paid for it? Well, you did. It's my steak. But we nearly had World War III over steak. Are you listening? How did Hannah and Elizabeth break it? Quickly, go with me to the book of Luke. I'm going to give you four kissing clothes. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Look what it says here. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Are you ready, saints? Look at verse 8 and 9. Do you have it? All right. Now, now, before I say this, look at this. When Abraham and Sarah broke barrenness, you would think that Isaac would have it easy. Isaac got married to Rebecca when he was 40 years old. If you're a good African, if you get married at 40 years old, by the time you're 41, there will be a baby. Am I right? If you start out late, you catch up with the town. Do you know how old Isaac was when Rebecca gave birth to Esau and Jacob? 60 years old. Barrenness doesn't just mean you don't produce, but it delays your production. And even though she had a prophetic word when she left the house, Laban said, be thou the mother of millions. But he still had to fight barrenness. You would have thought that when Isaac broke it, Jacob would have it easy. Jacob got married to Rachel. What was Rachel's problem? She was barren. All the patriarchs had to fight with barrenness. That tells you barrenness is not just biological, territorial, ministerial, financial, mental, or professional, but it's also generational. But you can break it. Come on, say, I will break it. I can't hear you say it like you've got laughing. I say, I will break it. How did Elizabeth break it? How did Zechariah break it? Look in your Bible, please. Look at the first chapter. Are you ready, saints? Say amen. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. It came to pass that while he executed what? The priest's office. Before God in the order of his course. What was the order of his course? The course of Abia. And it says here, And according to the custom of the priest, his lot was to burn incense. Circle that in your Bible. Incense in the Bible is typical of prayer. You find this in Psalms 141, 
verse 2, and you'll find it in the book of Revelation. Now, it was the course of Abiyah, and he offered up prayer. Say amen, saints. How did Hannah break it? She began to pray out of desperation, out of a desperate need. She fasted and she began to pray. And the priest thought that she had gone crazy, thought that she was drunk. Some of you right now, the reason why you have not broken barrenness and fruitlessness is because you have not come to the place of desperate, powerful prayer. Say amen. Say amen, somebody. What breaks barrenness is prayer. Lift up your hands. Say, when I pray. Come on, talk to me out loud. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Say louder. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Do you understand that the first prayer mentioned in the Bible is Abraham praying for a King Abimelech, right? Whose wives and all the women in his uh, kingdom were barren. So the first prayer mentioned in the Bible is to break fruitlessness, is to break barrenness. Say amen. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Say it out loud. Say, prayer. I can't hear you. Say, prayer. Will break barrenness. Write this down. Prayer will open the heavens. Prayer will open doors, and prayer will open your womb. Hallelujah. Say amen, somebody. Lift up your hands. Say, when I pray, the heaven will open. I can't hear you. Come on, say, when I pray, the heaven will open. When I pray, doors will open. And when I pray, my womb will be open. Somebody say, I receive that. I see doors opening over your life tonight. I see a door of breakthrough opening over your life. I see a door of favor opening over your life. I see a door of promotion opening over your life. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. The Bible says when Jesus prayed, the heaven opened and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape. When the heaven is open, your miracle will take bodily shape. I can't hear you. That was a good place to shout. Hallelujah. I said when the heaven is open over you, your miracle will take bodily shape. Huh, look at me. Look at me. Are you not tired? Look at me, please. Are you not tired of putting a photo on top of a fridge? Putting a photo of a house on top of a fridge. Don't you think it's about time you put the fridge in the house? This year, you will put the fridge in the house. This year, the photo of the car that you have on the fridge will no longer be a photo, but you will drive in it. Come on, shout amen, somebody. You look at your neighbor and say, this year, because I'm praying, my prayer will take bodily shape. Come on, say, my prayer will take bodily shape. That means your enemies will see it. That means your friends will see it. That means you will touch it. You will handle it. And your enemies will see it. But there's nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And the Bible says he offered a prayer according to his course. What was his course? The course of Abia. You don't have to turn to this. In 1 Chronicles 24, when the priest became so numerous... That they all could not minister at the altar at once. David divided them into 24 classes, each one officiating for a week. And the course of Abia was the number eight course. Everybody shout, number eight course. Numbers in the Bible have got meanings. Number five for number of grace. Number six for the number of men. Number seven for number of perfection. Number nine for fruitfulness. Number ten for responsibility. Number twelve for divine government. And number eight is the number of new beginnings. Somebody here is about to have a new beginnings. What the devil thought he had closed the book. When the devil thought he had closed a chapter on the life of Zacharias and on the life of Elizabeth. His prayer opened a new book. His prayer opened a new chapter and gave him a brand new beginning. Somebody here, when the devil has closed the book on you, your prayer will open the book. Say amen. 
Your prayer will give you a brand new beginning. Shout yes! Hallelujah! It ain't over! Well, today we have a deal for you. I've got two powerful books in my hands, Receiving Direction from Above and Tetelestai. Now, they usually go for $10 each, but if you get the two together, only in this special deal, you can get the two for $15 plus shipping and handling. Order this powerful combo, Receiving Direction from Above and Tetelestai. Now, this is only for a time limit. This deal that we're giving you right now, two for $15. Receiving direction from above and Tetra Let's Die. They usually go for $10 each, but only for this time. You can get these two for $15. Call the number on your screen, or you can go to our website, www.glenarecon.org. Take advantage of this deal. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. God bless you. We're looking forward to hear from you. Call the number on your screen, or go to our website, www.glenarecon.org. open doors and prayer will open your womb hallelujah say amen somebody lift up your hands say when I pray the heaven will open I can't hear you come on say when I pray the heaven will open when I pray doors will open and when I pray my womb will be open somebody say I receive that I see doors opening over your life tonight I see a door of breakthrough opening over your life. I see a door of favor opening over your life. I see a door of promotion opening over your life. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. The Bible says when Jesus prayed, the heaven opened and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape. When the heaven is open, your miracle will take bodily shape. I can't hear you. That was a good place to shout. Hallelujah. I said when the heaven is open over you, your miracle will take bodily shape. Huh, look at me. Look at me. Are you not tired? Look at me, please. Are you not tired of putting a photo on top of a fridge? Putting a photo of a house on top of a fridge. Don't you think it's about time you put the fridge in the house? This year, you will put the fridge in the house. This year, the photo of the car that you have on the fridge will no longer be a photo, but you will drive in it. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Yeah, look at your neighbor and say, this year, because I'm praying, my prayer will take bodily shape. Come on, say, my prayer will take bodily shape. That means your enemies will see it. That means your friends will see it. That means you will touch it. You will handle it. And your enemies will see it. But there's nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And the Bible says he offered a prayer according to his course. What was his course? The course of Abia. You don't have to turn to this. In First Chronicles 24, when the priest became so numerous, that they all could not minister at the altar at once. David divided them into 24 classes, each one officiating for a week. And the course of Abia was the number eight course. Everybody shout, number eight course. Numbers in the Bible have got meanings. Number five for the number of grace. Number six for the number of men. Number seven for the number of perfection. Number nine for fruitfulness. Number ten for responsibility. Number twelve for divine government. And number eight is the number of new beginnings. Somebody here is about to have a new beginnings. What the devil thought he had closed the book. When the devil thought he had closed a chapter on the life of Zacharias and on the life of Elizabeth. His prayer opened a new book. His prayer opened a new chapter and gave him a brand new beginning. Somebody here, when the devil has closed the book on you, your prayer will open the book. Say amen. Your prayer will give you a brand new beginning. Shout yes. Hallelujah. It ain't over. <laughs> you know the old saying, it ain't over until the fat lady sing? Uh-uh. It ain't over until I sing. Praise God. Same. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it ain't over. 
until I say so. As long as you can pray, hallelujah, what your money can't buy, prayer will give it to you. When man say no, prayer will turn that no into a yes. When man say it is impossible, prayer will turn impossible into possible. Hallelujah. God opened up the womb of Hannah. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2, she said this. God has exalted my horn. I rejoice in the Lord because my God has exalted my horn. And he has enlarged huh, my mouth over my enemies. Penina, who yesterday enlarged her mouth over her. Today has been swallowed up because the prayers of Hannah enlarged against her. May Elohim enlarge your mouth this year. May every word that was uttered against you, may every spell, may every choo-choo, may every witchcraft, may every incantation that has risen against you, when you pray, you will enlarge and you will swallow them up. Shout amen, somebody. Come on, lift up your hands and say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Are you ready, saints? Come on, Abuja. Are you ready, Abuja? House on the rock. Are you ready? Let's read verse 1, please. The very, we're going to read from verse 1, computer, from verse 1 to verse 3. Glory. If you have it on the screen, glory to God. What's the first word? Let's read. Just give me the first word. I can't hear you. What do you say? Sing. Sing. Oh, Baron. If he was Nigerian, sing oh, Baron. Sing. Oh, Baron. It didn't say, Baron, wait till you have a child to give birth. Mm -mm. But when you don't have a child, sing. When you don't have no money in your pocket, sing. When everybody's turning their backs on you, sing. Amen? When every door is closed, sing. When everybody don't give you a chance, sing. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, sing. sing. Come on, shout out loud. Say, sing. If the first key to pray to break barrenness and give you supernatural turnaround is your prayer, the second key is your praise. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, my praise will make room for me. Oh, come on, say, talk to me, say, 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 my praise will make room for me. Look what it says here. Sing, O barren, you that didn't bear, break forth into singing. What's the next three words? And cry. I can hear you. And do what? One Bible says, and shout. What did it say? Shout! What did he say? Okay, what did he say? What did he say? Shout! Now oh, listen. He says sing, and then he says shout. The Bible says there's a shout of a king within Judah. There's a shout of a lion within Judah. I'm going to find out tonight. Do you have the shout of a king? Do you have the shout of a lion? Hold it, hold it. Or do you have the shout of a goat? You tell some people to shout. Uh. But God says, sing and what? Shout. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Enlarge the place of your tent. And stretch forth your curtains of your habitation. I've come to prophesy in your life tonight. Letting you know that the next house that you move into, the biggest curtain that you've got in your house right now, will not be big enough for your kitchen. Say amen. Say amen. Verse 3 says, for you shall break on the right hand. And you shall break on the left hand. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I will break on my right hand. I will break on my left hand. I will break in the north. I will break in the south. On the east and on the west. There's no stopping me. Say, neighbor, if you're looking for me, don't
Don't look behind you. Look ahead of you. Are you ready, house on the rock? I can hear you. Are you ready, house on the rock? I'm going to count one, two, three. And when I say three, I want you to banish the spirit of barrenness and let God give you a supernatural turnaround. Look at me. When God turned the captivity, our mouth was filled with laughter. God's about to take away sorrow from your mouth and put joy in your mouth and put laughter in your mouth. Are you ready? House on the Rock, are you ready? I preached this in, Af I preached this in England. Good old upper lips British people. They forgot that they were British and began to scream and yell. I preached it in America and they, were, they forgot that they were white people and they began to scream and yell. I preached this in Lagos and they were going crazy. Let me ask you a question, Abuja. Are you going to let England out praise you? Are you going to let America out shout you? Abuja, are you going to let Lagos be louder than you? Are you ready? One, two, three. Supernatural turn around tonight. Come on, look at neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've got a supernatural turn around. Hallelujah! Listen, 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 listen. Elisha, you know how he broke barrenness? He said, "Bring me a new cruise." Put salt in it. Salt is symbolic of mm -hmm. the covenant. And he poured it, right? To break barrenness, you have to be a covenant man. And he said, from today, there will be no more barrenness. From today, there will be no more death. How did he break it? By a prophetic decree. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. The next chapter, a woman came whose two sons were being taken away by the creditor. She said, man of God, they're taking away my two sons. He said, what do you have in your house? Got nothing except full of oil. He said, get the oil. Go borrow vessels. Shut the door in your house. Pour the oil. And she did so. Fill all the vessels. Came to the man of God. Man of God says, go sell the oil. Pay off your debt and live off the rest. So he broke territorial barrenness with his word. And he broke financial barrenness with his word. Next chapter, there's a woman who's a Shunammite woman. And she says to her husband, I perceive this man is a holy man of God. Let's build him a house, a table, and a chair and a candlestick. So that whenever he comes by this way, he can turn in. So he did so every time. And one day he says, what does she need? Don't need nothing. Does she need money? Nope. Does she need to be spoken to the king? Nope. What does she need? Well, she ain't got no baby. Call her. Call her. And she came and said, woman, according to the time of life, this time next year, you will have a baby in your hands. And I want to prophesy in your life tonight. According to the time of life, this time next year, whatever you don't have in your hands will be in your hands. And the woman jumped back and said, don't joke with me, men of God. Don't joke with me, men of God. Hey, don't you remember Elizabeth when she was pregnant? 
Mary came and said, hello. And Elizabeth came shuffling out and said this. As soon as the baby heard your voice, it began to leap on the inside of you. I know I should be hearing my voice tonight. Something inside of you has been jumping up and down. And I didn't come to play with you tonight. I didn't come to joke with you tonight. I've come to let you know that you will give birth to your baby. The devil cannot abort your destiny. He cannot abort your business. Say amen. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Hey, by this time next year, you will be in your brand new house. By this time next year, you will be the head and not the tail. You will be the job. You will be the CEO of a multi-million dollar business. Let that be say, I receive that. I receive that. No barrenness. Number four. No barrenness has ever been broken without the planting of a seed. Your prayer, your praise, prophetic decree, and the planting of a seed. It takes a biological seed to break biological barrenness. It takes agricultural seed to break agricultural territorial barrenness. It takes a financial seed to break financial barrenness. The woman sold a room and she got a baby. My time is up. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Well, today we have a deal for you. I've got two powerful books in my hands, Receiving Direction from Above and Tetelestai. Now, they usually go for $10 each, but if you get the two together, only in this special deal, you can get the two for $15 plus shipping and handling. Order this powerful combo, Receiving Direction from Above and Tetelestai. Now, this is only for a time limit. This deal that we're giving you right now, two for $15. Receiving direction from above and tetelest die. They usually go for ten dollars each, but only for this time. You can get these two for fifteen dollars. Call the number on your screen, or you can go to our website www.glenarecon.org. Take advantage of this deal. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. God bless you. We're looking forward to hear from you. Call the number on your screen, or go to our website www.glenarecon.org. Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody's called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glenn Arecchion Ministries. Today, consider to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.